Cool, what's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. SketchUp 2024 is here and with it comes one of the biggest improvements everyone's been waiting for in the program. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can check out all of the new features contained inside of SketchUp 2024 in the new SketchUp 2024 blog post, as well as the more detailed release notes. So I will link to both of those in the notes down below. All right, but first off, let's hit the most important update in this feature, something that people have been waiting on for a long, long time. Um, they've gone through and they've rewritten the SketchUp graphics engine to take advantage of new graphics technologies. What that means is that means that models inside of SketchUp are now significantly faster than they were before, which is super, super exciting. And so just quickly testing this out, I downloaded this Aviator's Retreat model from Mike Brestel. It's got 1.15 million polygons in it. It's a 21 megabyte file. So um, obviously people do have bigger, faster files, but it has a bunch of edges in here. So just navigating around in here with profiles turned on, this is significantly faster. Like you can feel it um, inside of this graphics engine. This thing is fast. I'm not waiting for the profiles and edges to load or anything like that. Like it is a significant improvement in performance. Now there are some things like, for example, if I toggle shadows on, you know, they can still be a little bit slow, um, but that's kind of to be expected for this to have to calculate those. But overall, like from a speed and performance standpoint, this release just feels different. So, I mean, I think this is really the release we've been waiting for. Um, everyone's talked about SketchUp upgrading the graphics engine. Well, SketchUp just upgraded the graphics engine and it is awesome. All right, so one thing to note about this is this is something that can be toggled on and off because some computers and some hardware are not going to support this. I've not actually not been able to find exactly where that requirement is, but you can go to window uh, preferences. And if you go into graphics, notice how there's options in here for your anti-aliasing, which you can turn up or down um, in order to get better for performance. But down below, there's an option for either use new graphics engine or use classic graphics engine. So if your computer doesn't support the new graphics engine, you can select the use classic one here. I believe it pops up a message if your computer can't support this, but I'm not sure because my computer can but if you do have an older computer and it's not working, you can use this classic graphics engine still um, in order to keep using SketchUp. And so they've also added a new style called ambient occlusion. And so ambient occlusion is basically a face style, which you can access by going up to view, face style, and checking the box for ambient occlusion. And so when you toggle ambient occlusion on, and you can't really see it now, but we'll uh, we'll make it more pronounced in a second. What it does is around your edges, um, basically what it does is it adds an additional shadow um, or a new piece of visual emphasis. And so you actually control this inside of your style settings in your face settings. Notice how there's an option here for ambient occlusion distance and ambient occlusion intensity. And you can see that around the edges, you're basically getting this extra emphasis. So um, it's it almost is like a mini shadow around a lot of your edges. Now, probably the best way to utilize this, at least in my opinion, though we are definitely getting some additional visual emphasis here and I do like what it's doing, but um, if you go into your styles, there's some ambient occlusion styles in here. And specifically, I like this detail style right here. If you go in here and you toggle that ambient occlusion up, you get this really nice like line and kind of like shadow slash ambient occlusion contrast view right here. So um, it's not quite a clay render, but it is a really cool way to create the stuff that gives you some interesting visual emphasis inside of your models. And again, like just looking at this, you can see that it's giving you kind of the, the shadow outside of the area where these two edges intersect in here. So you can toggle that ambient occlusion on either with um, view, face style ambient occlusion, or by going into your styles under edit and going down and checking the box for ambient occlusion right here. So we've also now got an option using Trimble Connect to share a model using a link. So basically the way this works is say that I took this model right here, went to File, Trimble Connect, clicked on Share a Link. It's going to tell me that I need to save this model to Trimble Connect. And so then once I do that, I can check the box for create a shareable link. I can take this link and copy it. I can paste it into a web browser. And now this model is shared 
inside of SketchUp. So we've got a view link in here. I don't have to go in and do any kind of like crazy embedding or anything like that. And this model can live on Trimble Connect. So this is a fast, easy way to share viewable versions of the model. And note that your different scenes will show up in here. So if you set them up with different styles or something like that, um, users are gonna be able to see them with those different styles by accessing your scenes. But fast, easy way to share links to models. All right, so the add location feature has also been improved. And we talked about this a little bit in the past, but basically the location feature that was a SketchUp Labs setting is now the new add location. So the way that it works is you pop up add location. Um, you can click on this button right here and it's going to pop up a little window. Now, one thing that's cool about this is you get a preview of your 3D model in your actual space, which is um, a really cool improvement actually, because you can kind of see from a scale standpoint, like where that would be. So that's actually a pretty fun improvement improvement, but let's say that we were to pick a location, probably not somewhere in the middle of Denver. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll we'll drop a house in the park. That'll work fine. So um, we've got this, this park right here. Let's say we wanted to build on this sports field. Um, we don't, but we could. So um, let's say that we wanted to drop this in here. What you would do is you would set your location of your model. That's going to set your axes. You can click on continue and you can pick the size of the import that you're going to bring in like this. So I can click and drag, click and drag, click and drag in order to bring that in. And notice how you have options in here to bring in the 2D plane and the 3D mesh, um, just the 3D mesh, whatever you want. Um, a lot of the time I'm going to bring both of those in here. We're going to take our mesh density and we're going to put it on medium and we're going to use the satellite in imagery. You could click on the street map and it'll just bring in your streets, but we want the actual satellite imagery. You can adjust your resolution right here. And then you can click on the option to import site context. Um, so when you do that, that's going to bring in all of that, um, all of that stuff. It's going to bring in your different map tiles. And then we can click on close add location and that map has been brought in. Now note that if we go into our tags right here and look at our geolocated content, we've got both 3d terrain and a 2d plane in here like this, and you can toggle between them just by toggling these on and off. So you can see how this one is actual terrain. This one is two dimensional right here. And so one of my favorite features of uh, this version of the add location is you can click back in here and notice how what you've already imported is going to show up in this map. So you've got your 2D import right here. If I wanted to bring in more context, like say I needed to pick up a little bit more road, I can click on import context and I could drag this over. So in this case, I want this box to be over here and it snaps, which is nice. Um, that's something that could be easily overlooked and it wasn't right here. Um, but what I can do is I can click in order to bring in that additional site context and it's going to bring that in right next to your model with no issues whatsoever. All right, so another great improvement is in addition to getting performance improvements for SketchUp, we also got them for layout. And so um, when we get these in layout, and, and so there's a new experimental graphics engine that you can enable by going to edit preferences down here under graphics engine, you can check the box for experimental graphics engine right here. Now, one thing to note about this is you're probably going to want to save often when you're working with this because this is still under development, but it does make a big difference in the way that you can pan and move around inside of layout. So um, definitely a performance improvement from that standpoint. I'm excited to see where that one goes. Um, so far, I've been very happy with that. Um, guys like John Brock and Mike Brightman have been uh, reporting significant significant performance improvements for themselves as well. And then there's also another graphical setting in here for draft mode. Draft mode does um, is it gives you the ability to reduce your drawing complexity while you're navigating inside of your drawing. So basically what this does, and you can kind of see this right when I move around, notice how um, what it's doing is when I navigate, um, it's basically going into a lighter weight mode right here like this, and then it waits to do this like final render of the actual lines and edges in here like this. And so you can set this to be always on or pan and zoom only. Um, so notice how if I set it to always on, then um, it's just deferring that final rendering just in general. But if I uh, set it to pan and zoom only, notice how it's waiting to redraw this until I'm done panning and zooming like this. But it makes navigating around um, with like vector edges turned on significantly faster. Now note that you can also set that redraw delay in here. And so what that means is that means that it's going to take 
longer to do that redraw. So it's delaying it after you've moved around. So if you're doing a lot of moving around and you don't want this trying to redraw every like 10th of a second, then you can set it to wait, or you can bring your redraw delay down and it's going to try to do that a lot faster. Notice how it's doing a lot more redraws when we do that, but you're getting those kind of like faster results. So you can kind of play around with this a little bit, um, but it is a significant improvement in the speed in which you can navigate in a layout document, which is very exciting. Now, um, one thing that Mike Bright noted in his video, because I did not realize this, you can actually toggle this on and off by tapping the K key on your keyboard. So um, if you wanted to, you could set this up where um, you could have draft mode on um, while you're working and then just tap the K key in order to turn it off like this. But in general, I'm gonna be using this a lot because this actually makes navigation and layout significantly faster. I'm very happy about this improvement. So when drawing with lines and edges in layout, um, you now got new inferencing functions for the line tool that are significantly closer to what's in SketchUp. So for example, if I come in here and I draw like this, notice how I can tap the left or up arrow keys in order to lock this to the red or the green axis when I'm drawing. And so one other cool thing that they added is say you wanted to draw a line that's parallel to this one, what you can do is you can mouse over it. You can tap the down arrow key on your keyboard like this, and notice how this is gonna lock this to parallel to this line. If you tap the N key right here, it's going to lock it to perpendicular to that line. So now you can kind of draw in layout the same way you can in SketchUp using this inferencing, which I think is a great function. Okay, so they've also added this ground mesh function to scan essentials. So this basically allows you to take a 3D point cloud scan and it lets you create a terrain mesh from it like this. Now this is something I can't really test because I don't really have point cloud data, but basically what this does is this is a tool designed to help you create this kind of like complete ground mesh from your Scan Essentials data. So I'd love to hear from anybody that uses Scan Essentials if they like this tool, if they're actually utilizing it. This is something that I'm super interested in, you know, taking points and actually creating meshes and things like this. I just don't have any way to get data to try it with right now. So um, I'll have to rely on you to let me know how you like it. Okay, so this one is actually massive. Um, and I think it's gonna fly under the radar and I don't think it necessarily should. So um, if you remember the process for updating extensions inside of SketchUp, um, you remember that it's kind of painful. You either have to re-download them all or you have to try them one by one to figure out which ones were crashing SketchUp if they didn't work. This extension error dialogue is a huge improvement because what it does is if one of your extensions crashes or fails to load, it's gonna pop up a little window that helps you figure out which ones aren't working. Um, and you can either update it or delete it. So what's gonna happen, I'll show you on my SketchUp, so it's gonna pop up this window right here, right? And all I did was just like copy all of my extensions over into the extensions folder, which I don't necessarily recommend. Um, but what it's going to do is it's going to basically tell you these extensions um, didn't work or they failed to load. From there, you're going to have the option if they are available to do an update. So I can click on the update button right here and it's going to try to update this so that it works with SketchUp. That's not going to work with every extension. That's gonna depend on a lot of different factors like if the developers fixed it, if there's a new version available, things like that. Um, you can also unload them. So for example, random entity generator, I can just click on this button right here in order to set it to be disabled right here. This one doesn't have an update, so I'm gonna set it to be disabled right here. Um, I'm going to disable flex tools. I'm going to disable Libfredo, and that one doesn't show as having an update partially because you have to go get it off of Sketchication, not in the SketchUp warehouse. Um, but you can basically go through and you can tell this to update if they have the ability to update or disable if it's not going to work and then you can close out of it. Well now, if I reopen SketchUp, notice how now, like Bevel, there was an update available and it's now been updated and it's ready to go. So that's gonna help you manage those errors when you're trying to update your extensions in SketchUp. That is a massive, massive improvement from the way it did work, which was, okay, just try over and over again, removing them and then installing them um, one by one in order to make sure everything works. So massive, massive quality of life improvement. Okay, so a couple other things that have been added. Um, 
one of them is usually with the move tool you've got the option to turn these grips on right here um, you can inside of uh, window preferences under drawing you can toggle off of those move tool rotation grips or you can set a uh, you can set a keyboard shortcut so now if I use the move tool notice how those grips are gone I won't ever use that because I find those grips extremely helpful but if you do want to toggle those to a keyboard shortcut and then be able to turn them on and off in case they're like getting in the way or something like that you could do that so um, there are some other things there's like a mid operation undo which, which basically cancels um, things in progress without undoing previously completed actions um, inferencing the guides um, there's one that's interesting there's a new leaning ladder inference basically what that is is if you're using the rotate tool right here and I think I'm using this one right but if you take this object and you rotate it notice how there's kind of a snap right here so you can kind of see it snap to the wall and I wish it like popped up a little something letting you know it was doing it but basically what this is going to do is it's going to give you kind of an inference snap when something's leaned up against a wall I think that's an interesting inference to have I can think of some situations where I would use that so I think that one's a I, I think that one's a good one to have um, so I think that one's kind of cool so there's also been a ton of other bug fixes and things like that, which it's easy to forget um, because those aren't new features, but um, those are just things that are making SketchUp a little bit better. So overall, I'm very excited about the performance improvements in this update. This is something people have been asking for for a long time and SketchUp finally went and did it and I'm very happy about that. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this new version? As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.